I'd like to call to order the June 7, 2021 public hearing for the City of Tampa's Architectural Review Commission. Welcome, everyone. My name is Zachary Greco, Chair of the Commission. If you're here to present a project, you will have limited time to make your presentation, so we suggest being thorough but concise. When coming to the microphone, you will need to identify yourself and your relationship to the project. The commissioners will not ask any questions during your presentation. Your project should be presented in the following order. Site plans, elevations, architectural details, and wall sections. Staff will then present the staff report, and we will then ask for public comment. Following your presentation, the commissioners will be asking questions in the same order as your presentation. Please state and spell your name clearly if you are here to speak for or against a project. Your time will be limited to three minutes, so take some time now to summarize your comments because three minutes go by very quickly. Following public comment, the applicant will have five minutes for a rebuttal. The public hearing will then be closed, and the only comments which will be allowed after the public hearing is closed will be in response to any questions from the commissioners. The commissioners will then discuss the case and will make their decision based upon the City Ordinance Chapter 27 of the City Zoning Code, the Design Guidelines, the Secretary of the Interior Standards, the Historic Preservation Development Review Commons, HPDRC, and the testimony given at this public hearing. The ARC can only act on items that are within our specific jurisdictional responsibility. Owner and agents are independently responsible to obtain any appropriate permits and or approvals. If you haven't already done so, please silence all cell phones. At this point, I'll ask my commissioners, fellow commissioners starting on my left to introduce themselves. Susan Klaus Smith, architect and vice chair. Dan Myers, architect. Brent Taylor, building contractor. We're also joined here tonight by city staff, Ron Vila, Elaine Lund, um, uh, Beverly Jusak, and Kamaria Pettis Mackle. And then, would a commissioner like to um, make a motion for the meetings of, or the meeting minutes from May 3rd and May 5th? I move to approve the, me the meeting minutes. Uh, for May 3rd, 2021, and May 5th, 2021, and that they be entered into the record. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion passes. Thank you. Good evening, Commissioner Ron Vila. I'm staff with Historic Preservation. Under announcements, uh, we have a couple in your packet. Uh, are the staff reviews that we include every month. And then uh, I wanted to bring to your attention that we are having our Wednesday meeting and uh, we have a, a full agenda for that evening as well. At this time, our legal will address the board with our uh, conflicts of interest and ex parte communication. Good evening, commissioners. Kamaria pettis Mackle from the city attorney's office. Will the commissioners please state whether or not they have any conflicts of interest regarding any of the items that are listed on the agenda? I have none. I have none. Thank none. you. Um, will the commissioners also please state whether or not they've had any ex parte communications regarding any of the items that are listed on the agenda? I have none. I have, none. I have none. No. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Moving to continuations, we have several this evening. I'm going to request separate motions for each continuation that has a date specific. So looking on page two of your staff report, uh, we're gonna start with the first two, which is ARC 21-159. This is for the address of 601 East Amelia Avenue. And the second continuation uh, to the June 9th is ARC 21-265 for 805 South Rome Avenue. Both of those agents uh, work with staff to continue to the June 9th uh, 2021 public hearing at 6 p.m. and that was to balance out uh, this month's agenda if we could get a motion for that please I'll move that the cited projects ARC 21-159 and ARC 21-265 be continued to the June 9th meeting can you please state June 9th the, the exact date June 9th 2021 at 6 p.m. Uh, yes um, I move that the project cited ARC 21159 and 21265 both be uh, continued to the June 9th, 2021 meeting at 6 p.m. 
Thanks, Kamari. I second the meeting. I mean, second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. The next continuation is ARC 21-309. This is for 21, excuse me, for 5120 North Swanee Avenue. This was requested by the agent to be continued to July 12th, 2021 at 6 p.m. And if we could get a motion for that one, please. I move to, uh, to continue ARC 21-309 for the address at, at 5120 North Swanee Avenue to the July 12th, 2021 meeting at 6 p.m. Do I have a second? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion passes. Thank you. The next item that we need a motion on is ARC 21-106. This is for the address of 703 South Newport Avenue. Uh, this case has been in our rotation for more than four months. It's been continued. So we need a motion to remove this from the agenda. If the owner and the agents wish to move forward, they will have to repost the property. So we're just saying to be scheduled at a... Just to, it's to just to remove, to remove from the agenda, from the agenda please. Because oh, it says continue to a future date. We got, we got new clarification on that as okay. it was coming forward. I move the ARC 21-106 for the property located at 703 South Newport Avenue be removed from today's agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion passes. And the last item that is not reflected under continuations, but we did receive an email late this afternoon is item number, is the third on the third page, which is ARC 21-279 slash REZ21-48. The email that was uh, forwarded to us is stating that the owner and the agent wish to continue um, that request to August 2nd, 2021 at 6 p.m. And if we could get a motion for that, please. Move to continue ARC 21-279 slash REZ 21-48 for the property located at 1502 South Howard Avenue to the August 2nd, 2021 hearing date at 6 p.m. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion passes. Thank you, two ministers, for that. At this point, we're going to do the swearing. Ms. Beverly Juzak will swear everybody in that wishes to testify, including staff. Uh, please stand up and raise your right hand. So moving to the first case this, this evening, which is ARC 21-223. This is for the address of 1711 West Hills Avenue. Currently, there's a vacant parcel there. The underlying zoning is RS60. What's in front of you this, this evening, the request is for a certificate of appropriateness for new construction for an accessory structure with site improvements. The accessory structure is approximately 840 square feet. Uh, you will recognize uh, this as it comes forward. The primary structure was heard in May 3rd as public hearing. It did receive a certificate of appropriateness uh, with some conditions. Moving to the photo essay. On the monitor, we uh, start with the site plan um, of the Sanborn map. The, the Front property is Hills, which is indicated here. Property in question is highlighted in, in the green parcel. There is an alley that runs behind the property that is uh, improved and in use. Street to the north is Deco, and then to get your bearings just to the east, you have Rome Avenue. This is looking from above. There was a structure there that was removed, and as I stated, there's an empty parcel moving forward. This is reflecting the current condition as of, of March. 
Um, you have a, a legal lot of record here. You have the sidewalk and the curb cut is existing. Showing some of the abutting properties, you have a, a one-story uh, Craftsman style vernacular, which is to the west. This is to the east. Uh, takes on the same uh, characteristics of the Craftsman style architecture. Moving across the street, you see two-story structures with uh, a brick multifamily structure to the uh, to the west. Some street shots, a heavily canopied uh, street line tree. Looking in the other direction, this is to the west. You see the street, you see the granite curbing, the generous parkway, and then the sidewalks. This is looking from the back of the property, from the alley, looking back in towards hills. And the condition of the alley looking in both directions. This is to the east and this is to the west. At this time, I'll have Dominic, the agent, to address the board at this time. Can you hear me now? Um, good to see you guys again. I was here about a month ago, and um, we, we presented the primary structure at that point, but today we're just focusing on the accessory building and some of the, the site elements. Um, I guess to, to start off, uh, we'll kind of walk you through the, the, uh, the driveway itself, making its way back to the uh, accessory structure. Um, we're going to utilize the existing curb cut and on the Ron Sanborn map that he provided us, it showed that the, the previous structure that was there um, actually had a, an accessory structure in the back and the primary residence was about the same footprint as we currently have, which allowed us to, to use the, the existing curb cut. Uh, we're going to use uh, three foot by, by three foot grass by three foot um, ribbon uh, all the way back to the garage. About midway down, we do have a double gate and uh, there's already an existing fence line on each side so we're going to add a new gate here and a, a new fence along the rear um, the parking spaces beyond that gate uh, it, we have it exceeds um, 36 feet so we actually have two spaces worth behind the gate as well as um, two spaces worth in front of the gate or two or three uh, we're also adding a pool in the far left corner, trying to maximize the amount of green space between the accessory structure and the pool with a small walkway that leads around the edge and then the stairs pick up at the corner and, and move, up, um, move up to a um, second story porch that enters the AC, the conditioned space. Uh, the space below is just uh, you know, car parking and, and storage. Um, I think that's it for that. Um, the the, um, the front gates, uh, we're looking to emulate something along these lines, uh, mostly pressure treated, maybe with a couple cedar inlays for color. Maybe it's more of a play and stain as we know that the cost of lumber right now is, is increasing. So they're going to be watchful of what that final material is. Uh, we might have a gate on the flanking side or at the rear of the property. And for the, the back of the property, this would be the, the main fence typology. Uh, that's just a black and white version. Um, I'll just, through the floor plan, I'm just gonna point out uh, accessory structure, storage, car parking, uh, stairs up along the side, enters on the second floor into living space. We have a hip roof on all sides with an extended hip over the, the access porch and a small um, gable on the front that matches uh, some of the gable proportions found on the house. 
Um, just going to point out a couple of elements on the house. We have a gable here facing, um, I forget if it's east or north, and we have a, a gable in the front. And the gable in the garage is, is about the same width. We had to decrease the roof pitch a hair just so that we fall within the 22 and a half feet. Um, but we're, we're utilizing the same um, structural members. We're gonna use some cedar uh, riggers uh, with a um, cedar bar drafter on the, on the front end. And we're using um, uh, shingle roof material, uh, which was approved in, in the first go around. Um, on the front, we're using a clope garage door, uh, which we're gonna find uh, like a period appropriate version. And the, the one drawn pretty much matches what they have in their brochure, which we can visit later throughout the material study. Uh, small access door into the storage area of the garage um, with stairs running up the side. We'll do um, not very much ornament in terms of the columns, but you know, pretty decent pr proportions. And then the cedar beams are gonna be present throughout. We'll have a beam here, a beam at the lower end. Uh, we're hiding an air AC unit behind and under the stairs. We'll match a similar um, lattice uh, found on the, on the fence. Um, uh, we have lights at the top of the doors. Uh, the other side, so this faces um, the house to, to the right, and then this wall here faces the alley, which is uh, right across the street from a multifamily complex. Um, hence the lack of windows, mostly for privacy concerns. Um, so you see we have the building section of this project. Uh, we're gonna fit a, a unit up, up there in the attic space uh, versus a, a mini split. Um, we have a couple stair sections. Sorry, can you guys see that or is it cutting it off? We can see it. Okay. Um, at, uh, we have a, a section at the at the porch showing another beam. Um, it's mostly going to be, you know, handled with trusses, uh, with with a faux, with a with a preformed um, rafter base underneath it, with a uh, attic vent because uh, we're using blown insulation. Um, <coughs> we're going to have PT uh, posts um, and a PT railing system, kind of indicative of the, the you know the character and flair of of some of the older homes in the neighborhood. Um, we have uh, here, we have some railing details, uh, newel post detail, um, just showing the appropriate manner in terms of beveling the top caps and, and being wary of not creating any spaces for water to collect and, and potentially rot it out. Um, we have our standard kind of window details. Uh, we have no uh, no head at the, or like no um, no trim piece at the head. It'll be very clean. Um, hence the modern mission appeal. At the base, we're going to use an extruded um, concrete sill. And I believe we're using MI windows, a uh, a vinyl aluminum clad window. And we are basically just picking out some of our elemental details uh, and providing some dimensions to them. And a lot of these dimensions are, you know, they show up around the, the historic neighborhoods. Um, we have a medallion in the front and just kind of showing how we have the rafters, birds mouthing into the structural elements. Um, that's the house there. Um, the clients really wanted to use, you know, emulate this kind of modern mission style. Um, and in the neighborhood, there was, were several other you know, mission slash modern mission um, projects that we kind of pulled some of the proportions and um, the spaces, uh, the rhythms of the porch, the, the tripartite. Again, here is the, um, sorry, the sandboard image of, of the existing structure. Well, pre-existing, it's a, it's a empty lot now. And then this is an image showing our footprint on it, just so we can get a feel for it. Um, this is showing the houses. So you can see there's a lot of proportion. 
and this is uh, some of the carriage houses that are within a block or two of the property. Actually, there's many more, but we kind of just grabbed a select few. Some of them are, are quite large in scale, uh, which probably they were there earlier, or maybe they meet all the primary setbacks because they're a separate lot. Um, we have a couple of Spanish versions. Actually, we just have the one in here. Um, again, that's a, a quite a large accessory structure, but some of our details can be found on this accessory structure here, which is actually just a couple houses away along the alley, um, which I thought was quite quite nice. Um, we could probably zoom in. So this is going to be a, a, a very similar finished look to, to what we're doing. Uh, we'll have a couple more trim pieces. Um, again, uh, this is the material presentation for the entire project. So we're going to see some of the, some of the other images for the primary structure. But we're going to be a, a CMU construction all the way to the roof, um, a smooth stucco um, sand finish. I don't think we have any pavers on the garage. That's for the house. We're showing the, the intent for the ribbon driveway, and we're going to have natural gra grass planted. Um, here we're actually showing the driveway in our, in our site plan. Um, we're going to have a uh, you know, beadboard slash you know, tongue and groove look under the soffits um, on all of the roof lines and porches, front and rear porch, and the upstairs porch on the, the accessory structure. Um, these are uh, some of the rafter tail um, elements that we're able to pick up that were matching our designs um, as close as possible, which is nice for, to get that directly from the manufacturer. Um, and these are showing the cedar versions, uh, similar intent and scale. Uh, again, a, a shingled roof. Um, upstairs on the Accessory structure, we'll have a, a, a similar French door to this one here. These other doors are applicable to the primary structure. Um, here we have, we, we want to do basically this door style here with this light style. So it's kind of a version of both, which we have, uh, which we found on their website as well as what we're showing in our elevations. Uh, we're using a PGT casement, uh, vinyl interior windows. Um, uh, we're going to have divided lights on several of the windows, um, and we'll try to keep in mind proportions. And we could flip back to the elevations if we need to. Um, for the for the fences, there's some imagery that we found that we were trying to emulate. Why it's so zoomed in. Um, for the front gate, not necessarily this exact design, but we want to use um, some of the same imagery with the same kind of hardware uh, to show off. And well, there's the there's the cat, the, the drawing intent. Um, some of the elements, the um, lighting elements found on the accessory structure, uh, flanking the garage doors, um, would be the, this here, and then some of the this very similar hardware on the accessory structure. I don't think we have any arches or anything on the accessory, so none of this applies. But over the garage door, we do have a a a, a form of lintel over the opening, like a preformed uh, cast cast element, um, similar to these these cast elements here, but flat. Uh, Thank you. Good evening, staff from Avila. Um, staff's finding that this application is consistent with the Hyde Park design guidelines. This presentation this evening uh, complements the approval from the March public hearing. Uh, that is a connection with the uh, primary structure. The one item that I have remaining from the staff report is uh, the introduction of additional windows 
on the rear, the front, or the right elevation, as indicated on his drawings. Uh, the historic structures back in the day had some articulation. Some of the walls seem to be bare, and if there's a further discussion to see if the windows can uh, complement the building that uh, has been pr presented tonight. I'm here to answer any questions. Thanks. Thank you. Right, at this point, we will see if any of the public, public would like to make comments for the project. All right, seeing none, um, we'll move to now the commissioners beginning to ask questions. Would a commissioner like to begin with anything? Commissioner Taylor? I currently have no questions. Uh, Mr. Furlano, can you show us the, uh, the offending blank walls on your accessory structure, please? Or possibly offending. Innocent till proven guilty. So we have the wall facing the, uh, the multifamily complex okay. across the alley. And then this is the wall uh, on the right side of the house that sits basically right on the fence line there at the corner. So that overlooks the neighbor's yard? Correct. And, and there's nothing that overlooks, there's no window that overlooks the, the pool that you're proposing? Um, not right at the moment because in the plan, it's kind of like living wall TV space. Um, we're thinking you know, bed space over here. I could, we could see potentially. I could see a, a you know, window flanking this space. We could move that entertainment area over, kind of match, match the returns you know, here, here on that elevation, um, which would then place area if that would help suffice Do you see uh, thank you that's I think that does begin to make it uh, if we could I guess go back maybe to the floor plans real quick and look at um, some of these windows. So on the north window, I understand maybe not having a window in the bathroom and where the cabinets are, I do understand that, but could you look at an option to where you do have a window kind of in that entry dining area? Um, you know, for example, you could align it with the window on the south facade if you wanted to have a window on the north on level two. Yeah, like here. Do you yes. mean? Yes. Yeah, I think that would help open up that space. You'd have a nice you know, visual connection there to this one here. Okay. And then understanding that the, the first floor is a garage, did you look at or did the client ever look at any options to add any sort of windows? We, we did actually. We, I actually had a, an access door that here at one point and then just to help smoothen out the rhythm of the facade, we had a window, but they were a little bit worried about uh, break, breaking and entering, kind of keep that facade of the alley for sure windowless on the ground floor. And then on the return wall on the, along the side of the neighbor's house, it was adjacent to a fence. So it didn't seem like it actually had a lot of merit to have one there. So is the accessory structure fully behind the fence or will be part of this exposed to that alleyway? Uh, be fully behind the fence. The fence is uh, three feet to the rear, three feet to the right. Okay. We could, I could show you that on the site plan. So these are the, these are the, the windowless areas here and here, which this will have, an, there's an existing fence here and then we're adding a new fence here. Um, yeah. So I, I, I agree with the, the, the window opening up to the pool for sure, 100%. Uh, but they did express privacy concerns to the uh, multi-family complex in the second story. Okay. Uh, 
I have a question. Um, there was a note here about the final stucco, stucco pattern. Mm -hmm. um, what was that in regards to? Because I didn't. Um, I think we're, we're just matching the primary structure. It's a smooth sand finish, very modern. It clean. specifically says pattern. So typically that would mean, for me, that would mean like joint lines and things like that, breaking oh. up the stucco, because you do have to watch your maximums yeah, for the, your area. The 144 square. Have square you there. studied that yet in your elevations? You know, it might not have dawned on me because it's such a small structure. I guess you're right, it does have a 20 foot length, so. No, we didn't add any verticals, but we can look at that, and I'll divide them up based on window placement and right. make it look proportional. Okay. Um, that's it for me. Any questions? I don't have anything. So one thing that um, was mentioned, so part of the application is the, the site kind of conditions or site additions improvements, um, which part of that is the pool. Is there any planned hardscapes or anything that are to go around the pool, or what's the intentions with that? Um, from what I gather on our early you know, ventures on this was for it to be um, pretty clean and modern. Um, probably some plantings, but not that I'm aware of. They'd probably handle that with either the pool company at some point or, or another rep outside of my scope of work. Okay. So just kind of clarification the intention then would be as you're showing now just grass up to the pool and yeah very very clean then because of the ribbon driveways going all the way back in location the pervious area was pretty tight so we didn't want to introduce any much more pervious square footage yeah i have a question for staff then with ron if how would that, I guess, the hardscape or any of the pool features that would be added later on come back? Is that something staff would go and come through and review or? Pools are our administrative function that we review. Usually the pool company comes in and we approve that. And then the, the uh, hardscape elements are done by others. So we get another discipline to okay. submit that to us. Are there any additional questions from the commissioners? All right. At this point, the applicant is allowed five minutes for a rebuttal. I think I'm okay. All right. We'll close this portion of the public hearing, and the commissioners can now discuss the case. Um, I have no comments, and I have no issues with this project. Me neither. No further comments. Not either. So I'll ask the question, do we want to, or does, is there any concern about the windows either on the north, the east, or the west, or? I, I can understand the homeowner's request, especially if indeed there is a multifamily to the north and a privacy concern. I would encourage the addition of the window at the kitchenette space. Um, personally, I think it's gonna be a little dark in there, and if, you know, you have guests, you kind of want them to feel like they're in a, a space that's relaxing. So it, just be careful of the lighting, um, your daylight that you allow in to enter that. In terms of the east elevation, which I, which is where the bed is, um, you know, there are historical examples of high, tall windows that let light in without concerns, major concerns for privacy. So. Um, again, you know, just thinking about ways that you bring more daylight in. We're all trying to be a little bit more sustainable. So his, history gives us great examples, you know, pre, pre gas lights, how to bring light into spaces. So even though this is small, it's nice to be in a small space with a lot of light. Right. It feels bigger. Um, just reconsider maybe some of that. Um, but other than that, I mean, the, the, the lower level where the the actual car resides and that that corner the northwest corner i i can certainly understand why okay do you feel that that needs to be a condition or just a, a recommendation <clears throat> in terms of adding windows i think as we discussed we if we feel strongly enough about what was shown and indicated on the drawings as he drew if we feel strongly enough about it i certainly for me i think we should make it a Okay. Recommendation. Yep. I agree. Yeah. The recommendation 
A recommendation and not a, con not a condition? A condition. I'm fine with a recommendation yeah, myself. Yeah, yeah. A condition. <laughs> He's agreeable, it seems like. Okay. <laughs> well. <laughs> if, all right. If there's no, if there's no further discussions, um, would a commissioner like to make a motion? Move to grant a certificate of appropriateness for drawings and documents public, uh, presented in this public hearing in ARC number 21 233. It's 223. Oh, 223, excuse me. In ARC 21 223 for the property located at 1711 West Hills Avenue because based on, upon finding in fact the proposed project is consistent with the um, Hyde Park design, the Hyde Park design guidelines of the city of Tampa for the following reasons. It's compliance with uh, requirements for a certificate of appropriateness. I think you forgot the conditions in the window. I think we were gonna do this with, with conditions. With the following condition. So if you're going to do well, the, the final approval and the final approval condition is oh, um, yes. two it's separate ones. Okay, so we're going to scratch that and we're going to go back. Okay. Got it. <laughs> okay. Move to grant a certificate of appropriateness for the drawings and documents presented at this public hearing on ARC 21-223 for the property located at 1711 West Hills Avenue with the following conditions that the window on the west elevation as noted by the agent be included in the project and other windows as may be deemed possible in the accessory structure because based upon finding of fact the proposed project is consistent with the Hyde Park design guidelines of the city of Tampa as it meets uh, conditions for uh, the, the, as it meets the conditions required of a, for a certificate of appropriateness. Do I have a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion passes. Thank you. Yep. So I apologize. Do you understand the conditions um, that were stated? Yes, I do. Okay. And then just on record. All right. So do I need to vote again or? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. <laughs> Good evening, Commissioner Ron Vila, staff with Historic Preservation. The next case is ARC 21-306 for the address of 2012 West Deco Avenue. This is in the Hyde Park Historic District. It is a contributing structure that dates back to 1925. The current zoning is RM24. The request is for a certificate of appropriateness for new construction, for an addition to the primary, for rehabilitation, with some site improvements. Just to quickly go through the photo presentation, we're looking at the Sanborn map from 1929. You see the footprint of the primary house that has a two-story uh, pop-up originally with a front porch that was open. It does face Decal Avenue. It, Albany kind of dead ends into Decal, which is a close proximity to the uh, parcel in question, and then you have hills you know, south of the project. This is the vicinity map, just so you get a bearing of where it's at in the overall local district of Hyde Park. The red indicates the local district within Hyde Park. So the front facade, you see the one story structure that kind of dominates that facade from the pedestrian level and then the second story peaks up. 
looking down the vehicular uh, access, you see the vernacular of the house, how the uh, siding almost meets grade with the overhangs, the rafter tails exposed, and then a series of uh, double hung windows on the primary struck on the primary floor, multi pane over a single with casement windows in the rear. This is looking down that drive aisle. This is looking at the side elevation is the heavy landscaping. It's hard to get a picture in there. So looking at the rear, this is where the, most of the addition is going to go here. There is a small screened in area to the uh, side of this of the structure and then a small mud room transition room from the outside as you come in. And then the last photo I'm going to share with you is looking from the rear of the yard, looking at the back of the primary structure and then the detached uh, structure here and the separation that they have already with the pool that's here that kind of went into the discussion of how to add on and, and keep in the pool. Uh, that concludes the photo presentation. Mr. Schuler will address the board at this time. Good evening. Uh, Ralph Schuler with TV Architect, 2401 North Howard Avenue. Red means on, I think, right? Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. Just to start, we um, want to look at the existing site, which is the survey. Uh, let's see here. Zoom out. Zoom out. Area. So, the existing structure is here, of course, with an existing screened in porch, which is going to be removed. Uh, that was added later than the original 1925 structure. I could not find when it was added, but um, it's been there quite some time. The pool was added around the mid 80s. That's going to be remain. This this uh, paver drive. I'm sorry. This uh, ribbon drive here is uh, going to be replaced with a similar ribbon drive, just because of the poor quality of ribbon drive. This existing shed, and uh, I would. It is an accessory structure, but it's really not quite big enough to really hold a car. It's only 17 by 12, um, and has access from from the rear alley, which this is not depicted. But in my other documents, it is. So, on the first floor, slash new site plan, we, we're going to replace the driveway, replace the ribbon drive, I'm, I'm sorry, replace the um, um, <coughs> um, entry, and basically everything in the rear uh, from the pool and the accessory remain. However, the access in the rear, which is the um, porch, which is a single story porch, we're going to expand into basically the same footprint with um, a small side porch um, on the east and a small mudroom on the west. Um, the, essentially, the front facade is unchanged. Um, so I'm going to go through the existing. So, this is the existing first floor plan as it is now, again, with, with uh, a pretty large rear screened in porch which has become the new proposed floor plan. So that floor plan is here. Um, again, that's, that's about the same uh, footprint except ours is going to be two story. The existing staircase here is not to code. It's narrow, it's eight and a half, nine inch treads. And, and doesn't work. Um, so we're proposing again to rework the kitchen and, and, and a new two code um, staircase that gets you to a second floor. So the second floor demolition, here we go. Uh, so this is the existing second floor, which we're gonna uh, all really only demolish the, this rear wall and, and, and the staircase. Um, proposed second floor is here. It's mimicking the, the first floor footprint. We are uh, extending e 
the, the second floor, or sorry, the, the new addition, about six inches on each side to pronounce that. And we're going to get the elevations, you, you'll see that. The second floor is really just uh, a, a new master bedroom suite. And then the roof plan takes this pop up here and engages uh, a, a T-shaped roof. Again, we'll look at that as it relates to the elevations. Elevations. So let's start with the existing front elevation, which um, is here. All, all, all of these elements are, um, would remain unchanged. The, uh, all the brackets and, and, and the uh, gable and details would remain the same on, on the proposed. Of course, beyond, uh, you would not even see it from the street, would be, would be the new elements of the uh, addition, rear addition. The existing rear addition, which is here, with its existing open screened in porch and its uh, proposed rear elevation. And I want to probably look at these in concurrent with our proposed east and west elevations, which will help give you a, a better sense of the scale portion. So again, the existing east elevation is here. Uh, this this uh, skirt board, which is uh, nearly to the ground, as Ron said, uh, this, uh, this existing porch, which does have uh, exposed um, piers, and we're gonna mimic those again. There's a transition right here of, of a small, small, I mean, we have some pictures of that. Uh, I didn't bring any with me, but, um, so, so the addition, again, engages what is the pop-up and, and this, uh, what is really a loft feel here. We're gonna leave that loft feel, um, propose a second floor master bedroom, first floor great room, and then facing east, this is, this is the small um, screened-in porch that would be accessed off the great room. On the west side, again the same ex existing west side, with with similar treatment, uh, with a double uh, screened-in porch door there, and what we're proposing: uh, a small mudroom entrance would, would would come in from the uh, from the street side, facing north. The small mudroom, and then then the master bedroom itself on the second floor. Again, engaging what, what are the existing five v, v crimp metal roof, so that, that metal roof would, would then engage into the, the new addition on the second floor, and on the first floor continue on and die into the, uh, on both the east and west side, these gable ends. And then on the rear, which, which I think is important here, um, th then those, those rafter tails, which are a uh, signature of this project would, would then again continue across the, the back of the property facing the pool that um, <coughs> helps break up the massing even though it is in the rear we want to try and uh, take take this uh, same concept of, of the pop-up and, and try and show that even though it's a bigger uh, element to, to, to uh, take the first and second floor and make them uh, be, be different um, <clears throat> again, uh, same piers, uh, new, 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 new um, piers, but of course they would be uh, CMU with a thin brick exposure or wherever it's, uh, that is seen. Uh, there is no current, currently there is no um, um, screening on, on, on any of the house as existing. We're going to propose to do a little screening of, of the base. I'm trying, sorry, looking for the right, right drawing. Yeah, so this drawing here, you can see existing. The skirt does all the way comes to here and then stops, and then all of this on the rear, um, these, these piers and that foundation is exposed. We're gonna propose to, with this same vertical lap siding, our vertical lap 
and I'll have um, here, which, in this elevation, I'm sorry, in this wall section, this wall section um, shows the the east um, wall of, of the porch. So this is a um, screened in porch. There's a window. Uh, we're we're going to have thin brick um, around all, all exposed sides of the piers. We're going to have a two and a quarter by three quarter inch frame here at the base with a one and a half by three quarter inch vertical pickets. Could you, I'm sorry, could you just Oh, take the sorry, there we go. Thank you. Uh, Oops, yeah, I wasn't paying attention. Sorry about that. <laughs> that's that's described here um, uh, about the um, screening of the foundation, and then we would obviously match all all of the um, existing bracketing on all the gable ends to, to be identical to what's on the existing house now. Also with with the gable end details to match those windows and windows are uh, typically nine over one on the double hungs and then that's what we have primarily on this edition there are some of course some casements on what i call the loft area but we don't have any anything repeated there that would be these kind of windows but our our addition is mainly the nine over one with um those would be wood to uh <clears throat> and then just to review, because I know we do have some site improvements, I wanted to make sure everyone understood what we're go what's going on here. So the new driveway, um, it's ribbon all the way to, to, to the face of the, of the main structure, proposing a solid driveway beyond that. Um, there's the existing fence that we're going to be uh, keeping. This, this fence um, is in very good condition. We're going to put a new, new gate here and a new gate here. Currently that gate is behind this existing air conditioner package unit. We're going to move it in front of that so it, you don't see that. Um, there's a new condensing unit here behind it and a tankless water heater also in this area is all, all again behind the fence. Um, this existing pool and deck is to remain. This existing secondary structure is to remain. Um, don't propose to do anything with that in uh, for for this presentation. And some of the elements, the the, the windows. This would be a Sierra Pacific window, an all wood uh, window, double hung. This this has uh, would be for the new house. The existing house would have uh, just rehabilitated windows or replaced as needed with, again, similar similar details. Not the same, obviously, 9 over 1, but that's, that's what it looks like in, in its face. The front door currently has uh, different hardware. We we're proposing to keep the front door. We would not have the key to entry. We'd have the, just the standard um, thumb latch. And then to the front would, would be a, a square uh, black entry hardware. The wall sconce would be pr this proposed wall sconce. And to address, Bron did have some conditions that we talked extensively uh, last week. Just want to review those. Um, we had proposed uh, potentially a, a, an outdoor element. Uh, we had removed that. We're going to uh, investigate that at a later date. That's what one of the conditions was. So that's been removed from the project. Um, so all the fence locations are shown, and, and we're going to mimic the existing fencing, which is um, in very good condition. And then, so. Potentially, and, and Ron and I talked about this, this is, you know, if and when some, someday down the road this pool is removed, which I don't, our, my client doesn't think that's going to happen in any time soon, 
we do have enough room. We have about 10 feet here that if you wanted to, you could potentially have this driveway come around the mud room and if you had a bigger accessory structure. This current accessory structure does not open to uh, the, the street or, or the drive, but currently opens to the alley and is, and is not literally large enough for a car. But we wanted to make sure that if and when that could happen, that there is enough room to do that, which I believe there is. Um, and then we did change the design quite a bit. Um, we had some hip roofs, we've made them to gables, uh, which is depicted on these drawings. And I believe we've addressed all of the other staff report questions. With that, I'll um, take, take questions. Thank you. At this point, staff will present the staff report. Good evening, Commissioners Ron Vila, staff with Historic Preservations. Under staff's finding that this application is consistent with the Hyde Park design guidelines, as Ralph um, stated on record that we went through the drawings last week pretty extensively. There was the incorporation of some hips that um, were kind of foreign to, to this site. So this evening he's provided gables to match the, the vernacular of the structure that's there now. Um, so staff has no, no concerns with, with that request. Uh, the roof line around the rear, he incorporated the roof line, uh, excuse me, the roof and the, and the back did not continue around on the first level. Uh, the facade looked a little flat on that, so he continued the roof line to incorporate this first and the second story into that facade. Uh, he did have some uh, outside elements, some uh, garden elements that were associated with the request. There were some uh, code concerns, so at this point he removed them and they're no longer part of, of this request. His request is not the information that went out to you uh, last week sometime. It's what the presentation shows today, so that's what you should comment on. And then lastly, he, he went through the sections pretty quick. Uh, if he could go through a wall section of the primary structure uh, through the porch and then uh, just overall, just the one of the sections that he has there and call out all the materials on the exterior. Um, that concludes this portion for me and I'll be here to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. At this point, we'll open the public hearing to any public comment. Anyone would like to speak either for or against? All right, seeing none. Um, the commissioners can now ask questions about the projects and maybe, um, as Ron mentioned, can go through before we ask questions and look at the, the wall sections mm -hmm. and just yeah. run through the materials. Mm -hmm. Want to do that now? <clears throat> yes. Okay, sure. So, uh, of course, this is uh, lap siding, wood lap siding to match the existing structure. Uh, wood wood uh, casings, all the casings are uh, currently five and a half inches. That would, that would be uh, typical throughout the addition. The uh, beadboard ceilings, uh, three-quarter tongue and groove uh, flooring on the porch. Um, again, all wood detailing, wood, wood bracketing, uh, match, match the same uh, gable uh, venting details that are uh, consistent throughout the building. Um, and, and, and again, thin, thin brick uh, for the piers and uh, PT uh, frame and, and vertical pickets for, for the um, foundation screening. And I think that's, oh, and then of course, if it currently has a uh, five feet crimp metal roof, we would continue that throughout the project. All right, thank you. Do any of the commissioners have any questions for the applicant? Let's start with Commissioner Taylor. Once again, for now, I have none. I have no questions. I don't either. I do. At the rear elevation, were there other studies done of the openings? Um, it, it's the existing is very light and airy, <clears throat> and the new proposed seems more closed off to the pool. Even though I know you have the triple ganged, 
on either end of the ground with you know the the idea of porch right it's 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 floor to ceiling for the most part and I understand there's furnishing and there's probably built-ins and things like that but just the idea of uh, permeability you know and that that draw to the rear yep I understand so I think I think your your questions um, of course this rear elevation has uh, at the great room this is a large great room there, there's going to be a um, triple window on both sides second floor has you know two double windows this is this is the master bathroom this is the ma master bedroom so and we have double windows and, and a side window on, on on the master bathroom so we have three windows in the bathroom alone and then of course we have uh, on both sides some more windows for and doors access for uh, in the porch and in the mudroom I, I understand um, let's look at the site plan of course we have a an existing condition in that we have a, a pool that is um, a, a good size and, and, and restricts us from from making other gestures but um, again we have a tremendous amount of open space here I've got a, win a window and a door here a door here a window here so and then on the second floor well this is facing facing west I've, Th three windows so I think we have a lot of a lot of windows I, I understand compared to the pop-up with which is basically a loft upstairs it's got all these little casement windows we're retaining those as much as possible of course but um, on the rear elevation specifically yes we have I think quite a bit of fenestration and and or openings thank you I have two questions. Um, the first one is tied to, so if we look at the existing structure, um, the siding right now for the foundation, as you've mentioned, comes almost all the way down to the ground. And then it looks like there's just some kind of openings for either vents or screens to kind of access below. Correct. So if I'm understanding this correctly, the new addition, um, that foundation enclosure will be completely separate and different from what we currently have, correct? So what we currently have, which is, um, and I maybe didn't quite explain it well enough, but so the existing condition here now, and um, there is a current exposed foundation and it transitions right here. And I, I apologize, but I don't have a very good picture of it. Um, but there's a basically a, a, a uh, raked board that starts, you know, from two inches and goes down to about four or five inches. What we're proposing, and the reason why we, we have our floor plan the way it does, is that we're proposing to pop pop our second our first and second floor out, so that skirt board dies into our addition. So um, I think it improves that detail to what we currently have. So if we could go back to that side elevation that you just yep. had up. So I understand the existing foundation enclosure to the porch. Mm -hmm. My question relates more towards everything kind of towards in this image to the right of the porch, so your house. So right now you have that siding that kind of comes all the way down. It flares out towards the ground. Was there any consideration kind of looked at to where the new addition, besides maybe the porch, had a similar design to where it kind of included in started to copy that same enclosure piece all the way around? Yeah, we, we did, I did look at it, I'll be honest with you. And um, it, this, this, this detail is long-term can be problematic, for, not only for access, but, but the wearability. The, some, of this, some of these boards are not, not, not in great condition and they're gonna be addressed, of course, as part of the renovation. Um, the, the, this rear addition again pops out, and, and let's go look at the rear port. Uh, yeah, here we go. Let's look at this one. Would you mind putting the front elevations up there? <laughs> right. So, so this rear elevation d does have the same detail where we have a continuous horizontal um, sill. However, we, we we don't bring the flared skirt board and. It's unknown exactly when that porch was built, but it was built 
decades ago, I think in the 50s or 60s at, 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 at earliest. And I wanted to, I guess, respect that, even though I didn't really love the detail. I think, I think this, this um, gives you kind of the marrying of what was old to what is new, but improves it. And then, and then also to, to, to bring that around here and back here, I, I, didn't, I didn't feel that it was um, the best design, I guess, for lack of a better word. Okay. And then I guess while we're on that subject, if that does become a, an item that the commissioners would like to discuss or kind of make a recommendation for, um, is there kind of an opinion either by yourself or the owners that if that was to be included, is that something that's been discussed? I've, I have not discussed it with the owners. But uh, so uh, b b between the, the contractor and I have this, had discussed it. Mm -hmm. um, this is going to be a design build project. Um, Peter Carlin, who used to throw on this board, is going to do the uh, do the construction, and um, he was very concerned about mimicking that detail again. It, it, it is uh, while it is an, an interesting detail, is provided on you know a good amount of houses in Hyde Park. Um, doing it on, on, on the addition he felt, and I agreed with him of course, was, was probably gonna be uh, a long-term uh, problem and how we solved it was, again, making the addition wider and, and, and trying to clean up that detail. Okay. And um, that was our response. All right, and then if we could look at your site plan quickly. So my question relates towards the mudroom sort of addition that extends kind of into what would be the driveway if that driveway was to either extend all the way to uh -huh. the accessory structure or in the future. Um, I know you mentioned that there's, you said about 10 feet right now. Well, proposed, right, is yep. about 10 feet, yes. So was there any sort of studies or looked at to where that mud room did not extend as far to the south or planned south here to allow it to to not kind of intrude into that line of sight where that way typically you would see kind of your you know your driveway go all the way towards right your accessory structure um so of course you know specifically to this house this house never had a garage or an accessory structure that ever did that um but i understand most houses in hyde park do um, this this mud room on purpose is as small as mm -hmm. possible. Um, it's only it protrudes about six feet. Um, so we did I think allow if in the future some other person down the road you know, could could, could uh, like the previous uh, applicant if you saw you know they had not a perfectly straight driveway they had some 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 things that um, meandered and is this driveway could easily have, be cut off at some point in the future and meander here and and still allow for an accessory structure the problem is is currently for the an accessory structure to meet modern requirements the pool really has to go so pools an element that's obviously not being proposed to be removed yep. and it's expensive so we left an, an ability for a what if, I guess, for lack of a better word, but currently that's not been in, in anyone's uh, mode of thinking. Okay. Are there any additional questions for the applicant or for staff? I have none. 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 Nope. At this point, the applicant is allowed five minutes for a rebuttal. I don't have any, thank you. All right, thank you. Um, we'll close this portion of the public hearing and the commissioners can now discuss the case. Um, is there anything a commissioner would like to discuss or any items? I would like to discuss the line of questioning that you okay. had brought up, which was the, the skirt board versus the more open. Um, personally, I, I feel that it's a great way to, t to clean up that detail as well as note that there is an addition that is not of the time. So I, I like that reasoning um, and I do think it's a clean way of, of, of completing that. Um, historically about the, the skirts, I would have an argument there, but I don't think it's apropos. It means nothing in regards to this, but um, 
I think I'm fine with that. In regards to the window question about the rear elevation being more <laughs> opaque than the original, um, I would I would recommend that there's some reconsideration at least on in the great room space to consider floor windows openings that go to the floor or closer to the floor. There's certain precedents for that um, where we convert porches and you know make them into spaces. And I know we can't see this in the street, but the idea of permeability and, and openness to the pool as as a homeowner, I, I would, you know, want that myself to be able to see to my pool and my garden and that um, that as a retreat space just adds to the visual experience and, and the just the experience of being within the, the house itself. So those are two things. Um, I know that the, the upper story is a little bit more difficult, but the idea of the loft space and how that expresses itself. I understand why it's lost, but um, just the scale of that is missing, I think, for me. For me, I think the, the windows on the first floor, it's a bit hard because it, in my opinion, I'm, we're looking at a screened in porch that from what we can tell was not part of the original structure. Right. So without knowing what that kind of original structure looked like, um, it could have more windows, it could have less. It's kind of hard to tell. Obviously, we will never have as much open space as the screen and porch. Absolutely. Um, but I think for, for me, it, it, the windows on the first floor, I, I think I could kind of leave them as is or allow it to expand. Um, I don't think it takes away, in my opinion. Um, the second floor, the same thing. I think on the, the rear side, the windows are you know work um i agree with you I, there is something kind of about the the windows that you get up in the loft right now and the existing piece how it wraps all three sides that you do lose i don't know how you would typically kind of pull that in um could you pull up the second floor sure floor plan real quick yep i don't know how you would really include that in here because you know, you have your, your master bathroom up at the top with the closet and then bedroom down below. Right, and um, I suspect the bed is in that one piece of the wall. Yep, so it's it doesn't really seem like there's a nice way um, to kind of include that, but it would be nice to see if you could, but personally, I just, I don't know what you would do that would still give you that same impact. Yep. Um, I think that for the, uh, you're working with a series on the first floor, you're working with a series of, of uh, givens. Uh, as the owner doesn't want to take away the pool, if you run those windows down to the floor or closer to the floor, I think you're going to get this kind of uh, <laughs> as you arrive at those windows because you're going to feel like you're ready to fall into the pool, kind of. Um, normally, when we have that, when we have that experience, you have a little more room, I think. Um, and as for the as for the skirt, I think that the the uh, uh, solution that is proposed by the agent uh, is a is a good one, particularly considering that there will probably be some landscaping along there, and it's tight. It's like a three yeah. foot bed, and so the skirt is you know is going to get lost behind some Indian hawthorn or something. Um, and upstairs, I I completely agree with your. Lament about losing those gang those ganged casements, um, but they did keep them in that kind of connecting area, which I think is going to be pretty. It, it doesn't seem like it's going to be particularly useful, but I think it's going to be really pleasant. Yep. And I think that the the bedroom works well the way it is. Is there any comments or sort of opinions on the mud room and its extended extension kind of out to the south? I'm, I'm conflicted about that because if indeed the owner ever would like to have a car park and be able to do it from the main street, not from the rear alley, I think it's very tight. 
I've um, experienced that with historic homes in the past where additions were made and then um, cars are shoved past those additions and it doesn't work. You hit the corners of the buildings. I would highly recommend if it hasn't been done already just for the comfort of the owners that this be looked at if it's if it's a future possibility that that 10 foot plus or minus that's provided currently is actually capable of um, accommodating and you know having an SUV versus a little mini Cooper is a very different thing so this is a big move right and we want our buildings to last a hundred years so this addition if it's built well and it serves the client well they're not going to want to take it away so um, if this is their forever home I would encourage that conversation I would say I, I wouldn't be able to drive past it um, I'm my, sorry with my vehicle I would not be able to I would have a very difficult time getting through there and, and that's my sense too but I'm encouraging a professional who deals with transportation planning to have a go so so, I, so, so I 50 agree it's a concern it's a, uh, it's a, it mean, is a concern um, but they do have access from the from the alley. That is my understanding. Yeah. But we didn't see any. And, and because they don't there. want anything there right now. Um, That's our understanding. That is correct. We can only say what we can say, and they can take it. I, I request a recommendation then, and not a. Oh, it's not a condition. I'm not no. saying a condition. <laughs> no, I think it's it's more of just something to consider because once you do make that move, you know, you do lose that ability to ever do that in the future um, unless you take that part out of the house, um, which you're able to. But just as a recommendation, just maybe check and make sure that you're, you have enough space or if you're comfortable with it. Um, are there any additional either items we'd like to talk about or is a commissioner ready to make a motion the only other thing I would say is just going back to the skirt board um, as a contractor I can definitely see why they're yep. not taking that down to the to the ground yeah um, so just my two cents were okay I'll make a motion <clears throat> I move to grant a certificate of appropriateness for the drawings and documents presented at this public hearing in ARC 21-306 for the property located at 2012 West Decal Avenue because based upon the finding of fact, the proposed project is consistent with the Hyde Park Historic District design guidelines of the City of Tampa for the following reasons that the massing, the building massing is consistent with other buildings in the district, that um, the alignment rhythm and spacing are consistent with existing patterns, and finally that the um, facade proportions and windows are consistent with the guidelines. I second the motion. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. The meeting is adjourned.